So today's video is super cool because it was like me experimenting with the Goal Zero MPPT. And it does work better than the PWM on the Goal Zero, but I just couldn't stand the results I was getting. So I actually connected a Victron and I programmed it to work with the Goal Zero. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that in this video. But first we're gonna show the results I got in like different conditions. Nobody else on YouTube actually tested this thing in different circumstances. So I think you guys will find that interesting. And then we will hook this up and I will show you how I programmed it and what kind of results I'm getting with this. And and this is so cool because if you can connect this to the goal zero, that means that you can series connect solar panels and connect it to the goal zero. That makes it so much easier. Um, I'm not sure what the max input is on this. I need to talk to the engineers and figure out what the battery management system, how it's connected to this EC8 expansion terminal. But man, this is awesome. This is really easy to do. Almost anybody could do this. You guys, first you remove this plate and then you have an EC8 plug and a USB. You just plug it in and then screw right here and you're done. So now it's installed and right now we're only pulling 12 watts through the PWM controller. So we're gonna plug it into this one and see if there's any improvement and output right now it's kind of rainy and cloudy so it's a perfect day to test this <laughs> and we're producing 13 watts that's that's pretty pitiful all right we're going back to pwm and see if there's a difference okay 12 watts now let's plug it back into mppt all right 13 watts so low light performance benefits with the mppt are not that great so not much of an improvement still, and I've been testing it for like an hour. And look at this, the max input voltage is 22 volts. Uh, the whole benefit of an MPPT amp boost wise is putting them in series. So it's just kind of confusing that we still have to parallel these solar panels. Now we're going to compare the MPPT on the Goal Zero to a lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell battery connected to an MPPT by EP Ever. We're going to compare the input and output wattage. So right now we have 19.6 going in and we've got 15 watts coming out of the MPPT going into the battery. So like 18 to 19, 14 to 15. We just connected the MPPT and we have to wait for it to track the power point so hold on. And we have 18 watts going in. And we have 17 watts coming out. 16, let's go back again. 17. So the output of this charge controller MPPT wise is better than the Goal Zero MPPT. Now each MPPT has its own 100 watt solar panel and out the output we have only eight watts right now. And this one has six or five watts. And up here, eight watts six watts now let's switch these panels to see if we have the same results now the wires are switched and we're producing nine watts up here five watts down here so this mppt is destroying the goal zero mppt and look at this one's at a low state of charge and this one is at like 3.2 volts per cell so this is a pretty accurate test the internal resistance of both batteries is really low but this mppt is just completely destroying this one. It's so in low light circumstances, the Goal Zero MPPT is not that great and it's practically the same output as the PWM. Now we have more sunshine, so we're gonna compare the PWM and the MPPT. All right, so we're getting like 50 to 54 watts with the PWM. And with the MPPT, we're getting 66, 65, 64, so pretty good noticeable increase of power, that's awesome. We're gonna compare this MPP to the MPPT with more sunshine. And we've got 44 watts down here and 48 watts down here. And now we're gonna switch the solar panels to make sure that our results are consistent. Right now we're doing the test again. We got 41, 40 watts down here and 44 to 45 up here. So consistent results. Hey guys, this MPPT did not perform as well as this one in low light or you know sunny circumstances. But this MPPT does work better than this. So I think it's still worth the money, but it's not as good as like a DIY system charge controller. So this MPPT is an improvement over the PWM, but could we swap it out for a real one? So that's what we're gonna try to do. I'm gonna take this out and try to hook it up to this. And this is how I'm gonna connect it. I have an EC8 to XT60, and this MPPT has XT60. The most important thing is before you connect solar panels, you need to change the charging voltage to 12.5 volts max. 
Okay, if you don't, you can completely damage or destroy this thing. All right, guys, we have it connected and it turned on. So what I need to do is change the parameters and connect some solar panels. This is so cool. So I tried programming this one and it's a pain in the butt, man. I hate the parameter error. So I just connected the Victron because I can connect Bluetooth and it's way easier to program. And these are the settings I'm gonna use, 12.5 for absorption and for the float, 12.35. And because this is a lithium battery, I disabled the temperature compensation. All right, guys, moment of truth. We are going to plug this into my solar power panel system. No way we're doing it. We're actually doing it. We are charging a goal zero with a Victron with 15 watts. No way. And something I just realized, though, is that even though it's charging the battery down here, it doesn't say that it's charging it on the screen but it is going up in voltage on this screen. So what I'm thinking is that this extra little USB cable right here tells the goal zero the charge rate of the MPPT so it will show up on the screen. So when you have this disconnected, because this doesn't have that, um, you won't be able to tell how much power is going in. But you can see on the Victron how much power is going in. All right, guys, we are pushing 179 was the max I saw it. It's only at 150. Oh, come on, man. It was pushing so much power. The clouds keep going overhead. Guys, 200 watts. I mean, it's actually working. It's charging. It shows the percentage. The voltage is correct. This is awesome. It works. Another question people might have is if you can charge with AC and this little setup. And you can. I just plugged it in. It's totally safe to have multiple charging sources. So yeah, we've got 60 watts coming in from AC and we've got 192 watts coming in from the solar panels. And now I cleaned up the wires and you can actually mount this outside of the goal zero and then have your solar input wires. I was also thinking about the cost of this system. So this module costs $100 and this thing costs $150. You could also, instead of using this, program a cheaper one that's like $100. So you're spending almost the same as the MPPT module on here, but this one, instead of 22 volts max input, this has 100 volts. And you can buy other Chinese made ones that are like 150 volts. So for practically the same price, you are boosting the amount of power that this thing can handle. And we're still charging, this is working. The one thing that you have to get right though is programming your charge controller. If you have that number off, and you try to charge it up to like 12.6, 7, or 8 with like a standard charger, you will destroy this goal zero. So you need to make sure that these programmed parameters are perfect and saved properly. But yeah, super easy. I mean, look at this. This took like a couple minutes to build. And I actually bought this on sale for $820 for their Memorial Day weekend sale. And this was $150. So for under $1,000. We have a lithium battery system with great output and now great input. So this is like awesome. This is super cheap and super powerful. So it finally passed my final test of charging all the way up. And what I absolutely love about having an external solar charge controller like the Victron is I can change the upper limit voltage and this can increase the charge cycle life for this battery pack. So instead of charging all the way up to 12.6, I'm charging up absorption wise up to 12.5. And so we're only at 92% state of charge, but that means that this battery will last a lot longer. And this system is so easy to set up. I think that you could recommend this for beginners. So think about this. If you buy an EC8 plug to sealed lead acid expansion cable that goal zero sells themselves, and then you cut off those terminal connectors and you just shove it into your solar charge controller, and then you change the setting so that the absorption is at like 12.5 volts, you are done. Just hook up some solar panels and you are set. Everything still works together. You can use this and the chargers everything else works perfect. I was testing everything out and yeah, you're good to go. It's a very simple upgrade and almost anybody can do it. Also understand that the Victron likes to get a lot hotter than my other solar charge controllers. So make sure that you mount this on a wall. If you do that, you could also add a fuse. That would be a great idea to even think about that. 
So yeah, add a fuse right here um, for whatever this is rated to. So for a 20 amp times by 1.25, you get a 25 amp fuse and put it in line here with the cable that you use. But yeah, I mean, dead simple. You got two wires, guys. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I thought this was so much fun to build. And yeah, I'm gonna keep experimenting on it. Also thinking about the charge and discharge rate and how long these batteries last for and changing the charge rate. I would definitely recommend nobody going over 500 watt array for this system. Even though you can take the PWM and the MPPT and they can say that it can do 700 safely. People have actually done that before. I would still keep it at under 500 watts because the battery will last longer at a slower charge rate. So yeah, I hope this helps. Please let me know if you guys have any more questions. There will be links below for everything that I talked about and I'll talk to you guys later, bye.